Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with another Leave No Dye Left Behind episode. We just hand painted some yarn using some Easter egg dye tablets. And the, the yarn that we're working on is rainbow, beautiful, tons of color, but we have a lot of dye left behind. So let's use this to space dye some yarn. So in my pot, I am adding some Stroll fingering weight yarn that I pre-soaked, there we go, in just plain tap water. And to that, I am adding, so this isn't only going to be leftover dye, but this is the water that I had used, and I'm going to go ahead and add it all. So. In the other video, I pre-soaked what was probably, uh, I pre-soaked the yarn in what was probably 10 cups of water um, and one cup of vinegar, which is equivalent to 16 tablespoons. And I could have kept this water level lower. And for space dyeing, normally that is exactly what I would do. However, I wanted to have the benefit of having all of those that whole cup of vinegar come into this dye pot as well. So I've just turned on the heat and we are going to heat things up. And once we start seeing some bubbles, we'll add our leftover tablets. All right, we are hot, so I am going to reduce the heat. And let's add these tablets. Uh, trying to decide the order that I want to do this, but I think I'm going to add them around the outside. There we go. Woohoo, look at these colors spread out. Oh, those can be intense. Right, I am going to get a spoon to help. There we go. Submerge some of these colors. There we go. But we'll see how these spread out. But right now I have to say this looks really, really awesome. So we'll wait and see how these colors mix and if they strike quickly or not. But I cannot wait to see what this turns into. We are now 10 minutes in, and although some colors have spread out towards the center, things are staying a lot more put than I expected. Let's see. Yeah. Woohoo, maybe the massive, massive amounts of vinegar are what it takes. Um, we still have, there's still some of the red and orange tablets present. So I'm kind of giving those a little bit of a, um, a poke. But overall, oh, I guess I just added some red in there. Overall, I'm going to give this, I think, another 10 minutes. And we'll come back and check and see how much color is left. After another 10 minutes, I am nearly positive that the water is completely clear. However, I am going to turn off the heat and let this sort of cool off in the pot for, I don't know, another 10 to 20 minutes. I want to be perfectly sure that things have absorbed before I agitate and disrupt any pockets of color that are remaining. But I really think I could remove it right now and we would still have these really great patches of color. But again, I'm going to be patient 
and let this cool in the pot for 10 to 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, the dye bath is still warm, but I am now gonna remove the yarn, and that water is clear. There's no doubt about it. I'm letting some of the excess water run off, but I have just quickly placed the yarn into a bowl. So now I'm gonna let this cool completely so we can wash it. Let's wash our multicolored yarn. All right, I am expecting that a lot of the color is gonna remain in the yarn because there was basically no color left in the dye pot. And I have to say, this is the brightest, probably most multicolored yarn we have gotten from these dye tablets. And these weren't even like whole tablets. These were partial tablets that I had used to dye a whole other skein of yarn. Now, even with the huge amount of acid in the pot, there, okay, there's a couple paler sections, but there's not a lot of white here. I am now adding some clear dish soap. Uh, the, you know, we got really nice color penetration through all the yarn. And probably, I didn't actually check the pH while I was doing this. Maybe I should have. But, I think that if you wanted to get colors to remain locally and see a little bit of each of the individual colors of your dye tablets, this is the way to do it. I mean, we can clearly see pink and red and purple and eh, I'm not sure if you can tell that there's two different blues there. But we've got the green and the lime green and yellow, orange. You know, we've got, we're hitting all these colors. And, you know, versus there are some sections where the colors started to run together. So we start to see more of the greens and some of the colors get a little bit muddier. But when you add nine different colors to a pot, and are allowing them to mix, that's gonna happen. So I am really, really excited that we have some of these clear, bright blues because that's something that sometimes is really hard to keep on the yarn. Um, frequently things will just start spreading too far. So it's nice to have finally found an amount of acid that is definitely enough. Um, I'm not sure if it's too much. Could probably get away with less. But nonetheless, I am gonna keep rinsing the yarn. The water is clear, which is wonderful. And so I'm gonna rinse it and then hang it up to dry and show you the finished dried yarn. Here is the finished dried yarn. And I really feel like this is the yarn that I have been hoping to create with these Easter egg dye tablets for a while. Uh, the POS dye tablets don't have any citric acid in them. So if you want the colors to really strike the yarn quickly, you need to use a lot more acid than I had done in some of my tutorials. I finally drastically increased the acid and we got the colors to pretty much stay where they, where they were placed in the pot. They did spread out some, but you can recognize the individual yellow, pink, purple, green, and blue throughout this yarn, which I think is really, really exciting for me. Today's yarn was created with the dye tablets that remained after I used them sort of like crayons for a Dye Pot Weekly episode. So you can see that even with these partial crayons and the amount of color that we got on the skein on the top, we were still able to achieve this gorgeous, gorgeous neon dyed yarn below. In this case, we had a lot of leftover dye. I do wish that there was a bit more maybe of the purple in the yarn, but I had less purple left over than some of these other colors. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and give the video a like. I release at least two new dyeing videos every week and you really don't want to miss one.
If you are interested in supporting Chemnitz on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can vote in po member exclusive polls, uh, get early access to new dyeing videos, and even see some exclusive behind the scenes sneak peeks uh, when I'm trying out a new dyeing technique. Thank you so much for watching.